So we're back down to July levels, and you're right, at its lows today, it was looking like the worst day for the Dow since early June. We had rising COVID cases in Europe, fears of a second lockdown that could spread here to the U.S., hit travel stocks like airlines, cruise lines, and hotel names, big losses in the session. Meantime, Justice Ginsburg's death means a contentious final days heading into the November vote with a looming battle over Supreme Court confirmations that leaves little hope for agreement on a second stimulus plan. Stocks are tied to a recovering U.S. economy dependent, yes, on another stimulus round like materials, energy, and even retailers sold off. Meantime, you have bank stocks that are crushed today after a scathing report found more than $2 trillion worth in drug money, money laundering, and other illicit forms of cash were funneled through the U.S. financial system by some of the biggest names in banking, including Deutsche Bank, J.P. Morgan, and HSBC, and that dragged down the entire financial sector on Wall Street today. So with the losses on Monday, we have the broader S&P down around 7% on this month, on track for its worst September in nine years. Now, historically, Neil, September is the weakest month of the year, going back to 1950. And in election cycles, according to research of Piper Sandler, going back to 1900, you tend to have gains from May to mid-September and then a stalling out in October. And they also point out that when the Dow is up in the three months before the election, the incumbent typically wins 80% of the time. But as you know, Neil, this year is not a typical year. Not at all. All right. Thank you, Susan, very, very much. Uh, Ted Weisberg, uh, an encyclopedia on all these developments over the many.